Now we are going to prove the existence of kth roots mod m. In other words, if GCD b and m is 1, and GCD k phi of m is 1, then x to the k equal b mod m has exactly one solution. Okay, let's go ahead and prove this. So since GCD k phi of m equals 1, k inverse exists. In other words, k, k inverse congruent to 1 mod phi of m. And what I mean to say k, k, uh, k inverse exists mod phi of m uh, by the linear congruence theorem, which is satisfied because gcd k phi of m equals 1. Okay, and this says phi of m j equals k, k inverse minus 1 for some integer j. Okay, and we can rewrite this and say k, k inverse equals phi of mj plus 1. And why did we do this? Um, well, because we're going to claim that b to the k inverse is a solution to the equation x to the k equals b mod m. And to show that, let's take it to the power k. It's like x to the k, and we'll show that this is b, and that will show that b to the k inverse is a solution to x to the k equals b mod m. Okay, well by this equation, this is equal to b to the phi of m j plus 1. But this is congruent to b mod m by Euler's theorem. And this is because gcd b m equals 1, which is the requirement of Euler's theorem. Okay, so we have proved there is a solution, now we've got to prove it's unique. So, let's assume there is a y not equal to x, such that x to the k is congruent to y to the k, is congruent to b mod m, and you probably already see what to do, raise the whole equation to the power k inverse, and what we get is x to the kk inverse, which is x, is congruent to y to the kk inverse, which is y, uh, is congruent to b to the k inverse. So in other words, x congruent to y, and this shows that if there are two solutions, uh, x and y have to be the same. So basically this says the solution is unique.